Hello kids! Welcome back to another episode of Spark Kids Online. I'm teacher Alicia and this is Eva. Eva, say hello. Eva? <laughs> How has your week been? I hope you've enjoyed learning from home. Actually, I'm really excited right now because we have so much in store for you today. We will be starting with praise and worship, but before we move on, let's pray for God to lead us in today's session. Alright, let's get into our prayer posture. Hands together, close your eyes, and head bowed. Dear God, we thank you for letting us come together online to connect with you and each other. We pray that as we learn more about you today, you will also help us to be more like you. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. Yes, Amen, Eva. Last week, we asked how you would like to worship God and many of you have said you would like to do it in the clouds. So today, we have transported both Teacher Janice and Teacher Janine into the clouds to sing songs of praise and worship with you. Are you ready? On the count of three, let's stand up and get ready to worship God. Are you ready? One, two, three!
I never saw that before. Oh, hi. <laughs> I'm Auntie Ashley. You probably know me as Luke, Rachel, and Esther's mom. You know, I've been thinking a lot lately about something that Pastor Gordon said in a sermon. He said that we magnify the things that we focus on, the things that we pay attention to. So first I got to wondering, what does it really mean to magnify something? So I looked it up. And to magnify something means to make it look bigger than it actually is. So we use a magnifying glass or we use a microscope like this to make something that's kind of small look bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, well, what happens when we focus on things that are not really that helpful for us or not that good for us? You know, we're all stuck indoors most of the time now and we're doing home-based learning and we're spending a lot of time with our families and sometimes that can be difficult. And uh, if we start thinking about that a lot, like how my brother's really bothering me or how I don't like that I can't go and play with my friends, we keep thinking about those things and keeping thinking about them. Those problems become bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until that's all we can really see. That's not very helpful for us, but doesn't the Bible say something about magnifying God? Well, surely we can't make God look bigger than he already is. No, for magnifying God, it means something different. It means that he becomes bigger in our thoughts and in our hearts and in our expectations. So the more that we think about God, the more we focus on him, the more we magnify him. And I can't think of a better way of magnifying God than to give thanks to him. So I'd like to share a verse with you. It's Psalm 69, verse 30. I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. Now is the time that we get pieces of paper out and a pen and write down a few things that we are thankful for, thankful to God for in our lives. And please share those with your family members. Let's magnify God together. Hi, Pandia children. Hi. Luke, can you tell me one thing you're thankful for? Oh, that's nice. How about you, Rachel? I'm thankful for Micah, 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 Micah. I'm thankful for Bill, Esther, Mama, and my toys, and Daddy, and my cousin, and Mama, Micah. Okay, and Esther. Esther, what are you thankful for, Esther? Who got that? Okay, thanks. Hi, Auntie Ashley again. Well, it's offering time, so. One of the best ways that we can thank God is to give him our time and talents and treasure. And now we're going to give him our treasure. So if you have any money that you would like to give to the Lord, I would just ask you to give it to your parents so that they can give it to the church in the Lord's name. All right, thanks. And now it's time for Wiser Words with Clement, the part of the service where Clement comes out and says some wise words. Hi kids, it's teacher Clement here here to help you to refresh your memory on what we have learned for the past few weeks. Oh, ah yeah, actually I also forget what I learned for the past few weeks. Uh, oh, last week we learned about Jesus, he forgive us for our sins. Oh wait, that's last week. I went to check my notes and now I remember. See, that's why it's important to take notes. We learned about the armor of God and how it protects us. First, the helmet of salvation. When we put on the helmet of salvation, we protect our mind from Satan's lies. Next, we learn about the breastplate of righteousness, which protects us from Satan's attacks. We can have the breastplate of righteousness by following God's commandments. Can you guess what we are about to learn today? I'm going to read you today's memory verse, then you'll be able to find out during lesson. So today's memory verse is from Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So, faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of God. Alright, let's go to our lesson now. Hmm, I wonder who is teaching this week. Take it over. Boys, we are going to play a game today with Daddy, also known as Uncle John. The game is simple. Daddy, you will throw these crumpled paper balls at the boys. And boys, you will try to avoid being hit. You can use this to defend yourself. Come. 
20 seconds. Are you ready? Uh, yeah, I know it. Oh, yeah. Ready? Yeah. Go! game again with this. Oh, that's amazing! Can I take this off now? Take this now. Come on. Oh, yeah. Get again. Let's try this again. One, two, three. Go! <laughs> Everyone, I hope you enjoyed watching Jaden, Zack, and Uncle John play that little game just now. It wasn't very fair when they only had this to defend themselves with at the start of the game, wasn't it? Well, from the game they played, I think you would have already known what part of the armor we will be looking at today. You are right, it is the shield. We have looked at the helmet, the breastplate, and today we will learn more about the shield. Here's a picture of what a Roman soldier would wear in battle a long time ago. Did you notice how big the shield was? For a soldier, the shield was used as a form of protection. It was worn strapped to one's arm, like this. Like this. And at any time, it could be used to deflect attacks of the enemy. Also, it could be used as an offensive weapon to knock enemies over with force. Let's try this with Papa John. So what is this shield in the armour that the Bible talks about? Ephesians 6 16 tells us to take up the shield of faith with which we can extinguish all the flaming arrows of evil. To extinguish means to, put, to stop or to put out fire. Oh, what's this? Flaming arrows just like this. Now these arrows represent words and lies that the devil tells us to make us stop trusting God, to make us worry about our life, or to even question God's love for us. That is why we need the shield as defense against these enemies. So, so what are some of these attacks that we get? And what are some of these things that we think about that are not true? Do you remember this paper box from the game here? Let's see what's inside. This one says, God doesn't need it. This one says, you can't do it. You're not good enough. Do you feel some like this sometimes? I do. How about this one? This one says, be afraid. Sometimes, very few. Mommy, what can we do when we hear these words in our hearts? Well, we can choose to believe these lies or we can choose to fight them with God's word found in the Bible. For example, let's try this. The enemy says God doesn't really love me. But the Bible says, For God so loved the world, he gave us his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish. But have eternal life. John 3 verse 16. That's right. That's right. The enemy says, you can't do this. You're not good enough. What does the Bible say? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians chapter 4 verse 13. Done. That's true. How about Jaden? When we feel afraid, what does the Bible say? Do not fear, for I am with you. Isaiah 41 verse 10. That's right. You see, children, we fight the enemy by having faith in God. The only way we can have faith is to read the Bible and know God's Word. When we believe in God's Word and He's there to protect us, 
we are doing what Ephesians 6, 16 tells us to do. We are picking up the shield of faith. Isn't this amazing? God has given us a powerful tool to protect us and to help us live a life that is safe and happy. Now before I end, let me recap today's lesson in three points. Number one, the shield of faith is a defense against the attacks of the enemy. Number two, faith is trusting God. Number three, faith comes by hearing and reading the Word of God. I encourage you today to read the Bible as well as to pray and worship so that we can hold up our faith, shield of faith and confidence. Remember this shield we had during the game? You don't need that. Make sure you have a big, strong shield ready as you put on the armor of God every day. Now, it's time for me to pass the time back to teacher Alicia and she has a very special task for you. I'll see you next week. Bye! Thank you teacher Janine for the wonderful lesson. Indeed, God has given us the shield of faith so that we can stand tall knowing that He always has our backs. I want to remember this lesson, so I've decided to draw a shield to defend myself from the attacks of the enemy. This is my shield. What do you think? Do you think you can do better? Hmm. After this lesson, I'd like you to draw your own shield just like this and colour it. But before we do that, let me show you how. First. You draw an outline of the shield just like this. Can I have a pen please? Thank you. Thank you. Alright. And then you can write the word FAITH in capital letters. You can hold this. Huh? Let me write this. Just like this. And then, we draw a cross. On the shield. Just like this. Because it represents Jesus who is protecting us from the enemy. All right. When you are done, then you can pass it on to your parents. Here, parent. And your parents will take a photo of it and send it to us. Maybe, just maybe, your photo of, of your shield will be revealed in our next episode of Spark Kids. Alright, I think that's about all we have for you today. But before we go, let's close in a short prayer. Eva, do you want to pray? Alright, let's pray. Prayer posture, eyes closed, heads bowed, and hands together. Father, we thank you for giving us the shield of faith, so we do not have to fear anything. We pray that you will protect us this week from all the bad things and heal all those who are sick. In Jesus' name, Amen. Okay kids, remember to always wash your hands and wear a mask like this when you leave home. Alright, see you next week. Bye-bye. Invasive bye. -bye. bye, -bye.